Good morning everyone. I am Mark Andrew M. Solano II and I am the next presenter for data analytics. Let me start with my objectives. So the purpose of this study analytics is to compare the academic performance of grade 12 students in media and information technology subject by the use of three teaching methods. One, the website as a teaching and learning tool. Two, with the normal learning delivery which uses only TV or projector and laptop for classes. And three, the traditional way of teaching and learning process which is no technology at all. Question number one, is there a significant difference between the academic performance of grade 12 students between male and female with the website used for teaching and learning process? So the second question of my research is that uh, is there a significant difference between the academic performance of grade 12 students using the website and not using the website for teaching and learning process? So there are two scenarios here, use by the use of the website and the other one is without using the website. So I would like to compare the academic performance. Is there a significant difference or is there no uh, significant difference? Then number three, are there significant differences in the academic performance of grade 12 students using the website, not using the website, but with technology, and purely lecture or traditional for teaching and learning process? So there are three uh, uh, data sets that I will be using this time. One is for the using the website or the LDP, Learning Delivery Platform. Second is using with, without using the website but using technologies like TV, laptops, and uh, computers, cell phones. And the other one is without using any technology. So is there, uh, I would like, uh, I want to compare if there is a significant difference in terms of academic performance of the students. And number four, uh, question is that what is the correlation between the speed of the website, security of information, sufficiency of data, and it is of use of the website in the academic performance of students using the website as the primary tool for teaching and learning process. Here, uh, what I want to describe or to know the correlation between the website's uh, performance and to the student's performance. Thus, really, the website's security, sufficiency of data, ease of use, and speed correlates or uh, has to do with the performance of the students, or thus the website really affects the performance of the students. So that's the question. So let's go to justification. It is important to know that the use of technology such as, on, such as online and offline platforms can help in the effectiveness of students' learning, not only in email subjects but also for the other subjects as well. The comparison between the traditional and the use of technology will show as a big impact on the performance of students creating our own, which has exclusivity in the use of website can help in the teaching and learning process specific, especially during calamities pandemic and other unexpected phenomenon that happens the success of the learning delivery platform will help others understand its importance and it can also be used for students who prefer distant learning because of several uh, reasons like sickness work and home distance. So the data used are the grades and responses of each student in the survey while using the website for learning. The grades for TV and laptop for learning is used and without the use of any of these technologies which referred to as traditional way of teaching. It is the best data to test if it is significant in the learning of students in senior high school. In question number one, the data set used are the grades of the students using the LDP and their gender. In question number two, the data set used are the grades of students using the LDP 
and without the use of LDP and compare it if there is a significant difference using well coxon's match paired test. Uh, the well coxon match paired test is used because there is no symmetry on the data that I have collected. So perhaps there are differences. For question number three, the data set used are the grades of the students in three learning conditions, which are with the use of LDP, with the use of gadgets only, and traditional teaching. In question number three, uh, this is a non-parametric data because there are no symmetry on the uh, data because when I use descriptives in JASP, the data shows abnormal distributed population. So that's why it, uh, we will use the uh, non-parametric tests. And for the question number four, the data set used for linear correlation is the responses of the students to the website speed, security, use of use, and sufficiency of data that can affect the academic performance of students. So the purpose is to uh, see or to predict if there is a correlation or influence of the website speed, security, is of use, and sufficiency of data in the performance of the students using the website. The analytical methods uh, used, number one, uh, statistical techniques are non-parametric man whitney u test to compare the academic performance of students with the use of the learning delivery platform or the LDP and without the use of LDP a non-parametric test using Wilcoxon's mask paired test is also used to compare the academic achievement of male and female Proskal Wallace H test is used to compare the three conditions of learning which are with the use of the LDP or the website, with the use of other technologies like TV, computers and laptops, and with the traditional teaching and learning process. And on the last one, the last question, the linear correlation is used to test if there are correlations between the speed of the website, security of information, sufficiency of data, and ease of use of the website in the academic performance of students. So for question number one, is there a significant difference between the academic performance of grade 12 students between the male and female with the website use for teaching and learning process? We will use just application to check the normality of the population distribution. So we have a data actually, we will just open the JASP application, then we will locate the file by simply clicking on open, computer, then let's browse, the data is already typed in, so here is the data, now we will conduct first the descriptives using on the, the with the LDP. So that uh, we can see if there is uh, uh, normality on the uh, data on the data set. So click on descriptives. Okay. Then click on with LDP. So here with LDP means the use of the learning delivery platform for learning. Okay. So these are their grades. And these are the gender, male, female. The number of male and female is not the same. And that makes it, uh, the data set, not symmetric. So let's try to click here on the LDP. Then for the gender, for the split. Okay, so then let's go to the output. As we can see here, Value. We use the okay, minimum, we remove also the minimum and maximum. We will use only the skewness, photosis, and shapiro test. So as you can see here, 
the skewness should be zero for symmetry but if the value of the skewness for male and female is not zero then means that uh, or it is not normally distributed and also the kurtosis value should be three but in our case uh, we have negative 0 0.896 which means that this is so negatively skewed and it is platycortic and it means that the data distribution is not normal if this is the case we cannot use the uh, the independent t test for this sample uh, for this data set so we will use uh, the non-parametric which is the man with me test okay so the student is for the parametric and the man with me is for the non-parametric tests so we will again uh, move this to the dependent variables and the gender is to the grouping variable so as we can see that the independent test shows that there is a significant difference between the male and female in terms of the academic performance of the students if we write this in an APA format so it will say that a man with the test indicated that the grade is greater for female median is equal to 82 than for male median is equal to 79 where u is equal to 6 and np is equal to 0 0.001 which is smaller than the alpha so if we're going to look at the um, Uh, for question number one, is there a significant difference between the academic performance of grade 12 students between male and female with the website used for teaching and learning classes? So here, we're going to uh, compare the academic performance of male and female students. So we will use JASP for the uh, t-tests or first before going to use the t-test we will use the descriptives in order to check for nor, uh, normal distribution of data so let's open just and click on the data so i name it as independent data first then here we can see that there is uh, the grades of the students with LDP with the use of LDP or learning delivery platform and on the other side is the gender so let's try to click descriptives there and let us add with LDP as our variables and gender as the split so at the right most, we can see the descriptive statistics. So here under the statistics, let us see, uh, let us remove other, which is not needed. So let's use median, skewness, kurtosis, chapter wealth, then maximum, minimum, we remove that. So we need only the standard deviation. So if we're going to look at the data, uh, we can see that the median is 82 
and the other one for male is 79 for female is 82 the mean is 82.901 and for male is 80.87 and for the test of symmetry we can see that the skewness is 0 0.04 and 0 0.730 if the skewness is not zero then the it is not symmetrically distributed or there is no symmetry in the distribution of the population so it is not normally distributed so uh, the skewness should be zero for symmetry so if not then then there is no normal distribution among the populations so for the kurtosis it shows that it has a negative value which is negative 0 0.896 and negative 0 0.544 so this means that the uh, cortosis is platycortic and it is not normal uh, we can say that the cortosis is normal if the value is 3 so if it is less than 3 it's not normal if it's greater than 3 it's not also normal so therefore the data distribution is not uh, normal. In the Shapiro well, or the p-value for the Shapiro well, you can see that uh, it has uh, 0 0.001. So this is a strong indication that the data set is not normally distributed. So because of this, we will use a test, a t-test, which is a non-parametric test. The man whitney test is used for non-parametric tests. Uh, so here, the parametric test is student. So we will use man whitney for the non-parametric tests. Now, we click on the with LDP and transfer it to this dependent variable and the gender for the grouping variable. So, we can see that the p-value in the independent t-tests using man whitney u-test is 0 0.001 which is less than the alpha which is 0 0.05 this means that there is a significant difference between the two and uh, in an APA format, we can say that a man with me test indicated that the grade is greater for female. Median is equivalent to 82. So if we're going to go back here, here's the median. Then for male, the median is 79. And the U is 6. And the p-value is 0, 0, 001. For question number two, in using the JAS application, uh, is there a significant difference between the active performance of a grade 12 students using the website and not using the website for teaching and learning process? So here, we were going to use the data for uh, paired t-test. Let us open just and open the data. So this time we will use the paired t test um, value. So here, based on our question, is there a significant difference between the academic performance of grade 12 students using the website? and not using the website, we are trying to compare the use of website and without the use of website for the academic performance of grade 12 students. So now, we have here the data sets without LDP or without the use of the learning delivery platform or the website and with the use of the learning delivery platform then we have also here the gender, but we are concerned only with these two. So we will use a paired t-test for this. First, we will test the distribution normality of the population. 
First is that we're going to click on the descriptives. And we will use this two uh, as our variables and the gender as our split. Okay. So for the statistics, uh, again we will use the mode median standard edition with the skewness, kurtosis, and the Shapiro well test. So as you can see here, the skewness is the test for uh, the symmetry of the data set. So as we can see here, without LDP, for male, there is negative. For male, there is positive. For female, this is positive and still positive. So for without LDP, negatively skewed and positively skewed. So they are on both sides, but there's still there's no symmetry because uh, the skewness is not equal to zero and it is negatively skewed. And also for the female here, it's not equal to zero. If we're going to look at the kurtosis, so all are negatives, which means that these are platycortic and the values are less than zero, less than three. And the values are less than three. So which means that the, our uh, data set is not normally distributed. Then the p-value for the Shapiro wealth is uh, 0.001, which is a strong indication our data distribution is not normal. There is no symmetry on the data set. So which means that we cannot use paired t-tests, but instead we will use the Wilcoxon rank sum test. So we will click here on the paired t-test. Okay, then uh, click on the two variables in pair there without LDP and with LDP. Then we will use instead of student, we will use will focus on and we will add some descriptives there. So as you can see that from this test, we can see that there is a significant difference because the p value is 0.001 so in uh, APA format we can say that a Wilcoxon te rank tests indicated that without LDP was statistically higher than with LDP because Z is 5.534 and the p-value is less than the alpha which is 0 0.05 and its value is 0 0.001 for question number three using just application the question is are there significant differences in the academic performance of k-12 students using the website not using the website but with technology and purely lecture or traditional for teaching and learning process. This particular question we are trying to find significance in the academic performance between uh, students using the website, not using the website but with technology such as TV, computer, laptop, projector and cell phones and the other one is the purely lecture or the traditional way of teaching and learning process. So let us open the data in just so that we can see the output. So we will use this data because this is the data for the um, 
uh, for the question number three. So these are the grades, and on the other side is the condition. So we have three conditions here: condition one, condition two, and condition three. So first, what we're going to do is to conduct a descriptives on the data set. First, the grades. We will move the grades to the value variables. Then condition to split. So in the statistics, we remove valid, missing, minimum, maximum, skewness, photosis, and separable should be checked. So let us examine the descriptive statistics. So as we can see here, the skewness is negative for condition one. And that is negative 1 uh, 0.120 and positive on conditions 2 and 3. So this, uh, this QNS indicates that there is no symmetry in all of the variables. That the population is not normally distributed. So the kurtosis also shows uh, a negatively skewed uh, graph. So it means that there is uh, no normal distribution among the population. And for the Shapiro wealth, we can see that the value or the p value for the Shapiro wealth for condition 1 is 0 0.07, condition 2 is 0 0.001, and 0 0.001 also for condition 3. This is a strong indicator that the population is not normally distributed. So, which means that we cannot use ANOVA for this because ANOVA is for parametric uh, test only. So, this one will, we will use a uh, cross Wallis test for non-parametric tests. So, first, to do that, first we go to ANOVA, then click on ANOVA. Well, uh, we add this one to the dependent variable and the condition to the x factor. Then we go to the uh, assumption checks. So we have assumption checks now. Uh, we have go to the post hoc test or uh, gives a statistical difference among uh, the different methods of teaching. So, and also we will click on the Shapiro wealth and the non parametrics to see if there is a significant difference among the uh, teaching conditions. Okay. So here we can see in the ANOVA we have the p-value which is 001 and for post hoc the comparison of condition 1 and condition 2 we have the p2k which is uh, 0 0.044 which is less than 0 0.05 uh, which means that there is a significant difference between the two condition 1 and 2 and for condition 1 and 3 we have the PTK 0 0.001 which has a significant difference with 1 and 3 and for number 2, still, we have the value of P2K, which is 0 0.001, which indicates that there is a significant difference between the teaching condition 2 and teaching condition 3. The Coscal Wallis shows in APA format that a Coscal Wallis H test shows that there was a statistical difference in grades between the different teaching methods where x sub 2 or x squared times 2 is 45.074 and p value is 0 0.001 with the mean grades of 79.48 for traditional 81.607 for with LDP and 82.82 .82 without for question number four, what is the correlation between the speed of the website 
security of information, sufficiency of data, and ease of use of the website in the academic performance of the students using the website as the primary tool for teaching and learning process. Here, what we are trying to determine is the correlation of the four variables or the predictors with the uh, academic performance of the students. So to determine if the four predictors variables, which are the speed, security, sufficiency of data, and ease of use, can predict the academic performance of students using the LDP, first we run a quick descriptive using the JASP. So let us open first JASP application. And let us use the data that we have typed here already. So I name it as correlation. Okay. So here are the uh, data sets. Uh, so we have four independent variables, speed, security, sufficiency, ease of use, and one dependent variables. Now for the descriptives, we're going to click on descriptives. And click on the variables and transfer it here. After that, we click on statistics because we are only interested with the mean and the standard deviation. So after the descriptives, we will now go to the multiple regression. So we will click the regression, then correlation. Then here, and the variables, we need to input the dependent variable first, the, in, the independent variables. So if we're going to look at the person's correlations and their coefficients, so as you can see that on this coefficients of performance speed, their correlation is really not that strong. So which means that there is no uh, indication that there is a strong correlation and we can proceed with our regression. So if the variables are not strongly correlated, then we are safe. But what does it mean if it is strongly correlated? So if the values here is uh, uh, greater than 0.70, then uh, there is a really rather strong correlation between the variables. If there is a strong correlation between the variables, there are three things that you can do. First is you can um, merge some of the variables if it is possible based from the theoretical um, uh, perspective. Second is that you can uh, remove or delete one of the variable. And third is that you can reanalyze all the variables and run a factor analysis. And then check for uh, factor analysis, which is checking for the collinearity statistics. And also, to check for multicollinearity, we can look at the coefficients here. And on the collinearity statistics, we can see that the values of the BIF is 1.136 which means 1.159, 1 1.466, and 1.451, which is uh, lower than 3, the, a strong indication that there is no collinearity. Uh, we, in multiple regression, there are two things that we are testing for the predictors. One is the collective influence of the dependent variables, and it is also called as the variance explained. So here in our model summary, the R is the correlation coefficient as a whole or the collective association of the predictive variables. R squared is the variance explained of the predictors that are used on this. So if we're going to multiply uh, 0 0.016 by 100, we will get 1.6 and the 1.6 means in 100 percent 
there are only 1.6% uh, that the four, the combination of four can be explained. And the 84% is the other factors that are not explored on this uh, particular study. Next is the tests of significance that R2 is different from zero, which, which means that if R2 significance is zero, then it does not predict the academic performance. To do this, we're going to check on the ANOVA table with p-value if it is less than 0 0.05. So the p-value of the ANOVA is greater than 0 0.05, which indicates that the R2 is equal to 0. If the value of R2 is equal to 0, then there is no significant uh, influence by the four predictors to the dependent variable. We, this, the, the influence of the variable as a whole or as, as one by looking at the p-value in the ANOVA is 0 0.805, which means that there is no direct influence when combined as one. But now we are going to look at the individual uh, influence of each of the variable if there is a unique influence of each of these independent variables. By looking at the p-value in the of the coefficients, we can say that the speed is 0 0.302, which is higher than 0 0.05. And for the security, we have 0 0.592, which is higher than 0 0.05. And the sufficiency is 0 0.05 which is greater than 0 0.05 uh, the alpha and ease of use is 0 0.961 which is greater than the alpha which is 0 0.05 so even on the individual influence we can see that there is no uh, significant influence by the predictors to the independent variables thank you very much for listening and good day